It is now 8.30, Tuesday morning. Welcome to the WLBB Community Voice Program here on News Talk 1330, FM 106.3, streaming live online at Newstalk1330.com. And I'm your host, Colin Worthington, our guest this morning. He's a candidate for County Commissioner, District 3 in Harrelson County. want to uh, remind you that uh, early voting, this is the second week of early voting. That'll go on for the rest of this week. It'll go on next week as well in both Carroll and Harrelson County. But uh, today we're going to focus on Harrelson County and our guest, who is John Daniel. John, good morning. Hey, good morning, Colin. I appreciate you tuning in with us uh, this early in the morning and uh, talking about your campaign. Again, John Daniel is running for District 3 Commissioner of Harrelson County. He's challenging incumbent Adam Buddy, who I believe has only uh, been in that role for like a year and a half. Um, so, um, yeah, again, John, John challenging him this go-around. Well, John, tell us about yourself, please. Well, first off, good morning. I appreciate you uh, having me on this morning. Um, a little bit about me. I was born and raised here in Harrelson County, a graduate of Harrelson County High School. Um, after graduation, I went on to work with the Georgia State Patrol. Uh, uh, I was able to work in many roles. I had to buy my time, though, and start out as a dispatcher and um, was eventually able to go to trooper school where I worked on the road and safety education, recruiting, and um, later on was asked to join up with our dignitary protection team, which uh, got me on the detail to take care of Governor Deal and his family. And then uh, when the camps were elected, uh, they kept me on board, and I was able to work for Governor Kemp uh, and his family, taking care of them and uh, traveling around wherever they may go. Uh, the dignitary protection unit for the state patrol is almost like the Secret Service uh, for the president, but we do it more on a state level. Um, but our trainings through the Secret Service um, guidelines. So I've done that for 11 years as a trooper, and then uh, <clears throat> I just recently took a position back in the fall with Harris County School District as the transportation director, uh, which slowly rolled into becoming a director of school safety because of my law enforcement background. So that's currently where I'm serving in this COVID-19. Uh, kind of fell under school safety, so we're – we're learning as we go with, with this ordeal. Well, I guess you're yeah, introducing that I didn't know you had taken on uh, that new role, but uh, what are the conversations that you're having in the school district about returning next year, about the preparations you may need to make? We're following a lot of the guidelines from the uh, Department of Public Health and the CDC, of course, and then whatever the governor uh, pushes out. But uh, we're currently having meetings uh, as a school district. Uh, we've got some teams set up where we're tackling a series of questions that were raised by uh, folks within the school district, uh, administrators, teachers, and staff, of how do we go through a school year uh, with the current guidelines in place. Ultimately, we want it to get better, but if things stay the same, we're trying to prepare for the worst and hope for the best. But right now, I think we've got some good ideas and good plans in mind, and we, like I said, we meet uh, often on that to discuss it, and um, hopefully we can get some ideas and a guideline laid in place so that we can start back the next school year with as uh, little downtime as possible to try to get the kids back into a classroom setting and learning and uh, hopefully go through it like we've done in the years past and not have to worry about too many issues or another rise in the COVID-19 pandemic. All right, John Daniel, our guest on this morning's Community Voice Program, candidate for District 3 Commissioner. <laughs> of uh, Harrelson County. Talk about your, um, you know, why was this the right time for you to uh, run for office? Uh, well, ultimately, I was able to, to get back working here local, and I've always uh, stayed involved here locally with uh, volunteering, whether it was through uh, rec ball or other community events like Toys for Tots. But uh, looking at the direction and the way things were going here in the county, and especially with uh, this pandemic and our kids being sent home and a lot of them were sent to online learning but the majority of our county is not serviced through uh internet so and there's a lack of internet in our county um uh, and some of these kids are sitting home trying to do a work packet uh, without any access to internet so it really slows down their learning process and it hurts businesses and it hurts other individuals in the county with the lack of internet so seeing how that was going and uh us having an opportunity to to go after a quality uh, wired fiber internet, and then uh, all of a sudden that that opportunity just kind of disappeared. And uh, I think that's something that we need to 
kind of go back after, and I think with my time with the state uh, and being involved there would be a good opportunity for me to run uh, and utilize those contacts that I do have to try to get that back moving uh, to put Harris County back on the forefront of that idea. We're still in the discussions, but now we're later on down the road. Instead of it being now, it's a later idea. There were a couple of um, things put out there about why that uh, opportunity failed, the, the the fiber internet, why that failed. Is there anything official out of the county that you're aware of about why that, uh, um, that didn't pass through? No, nothing official. I mean, there's some speculation to mm-hmm. to some things, um, and I believe that I mean, if it was uh, really looked into, we could find out uh, the truth, but it, it's hard to go down a bunch of different avenues to try to get the truth out of a story. Uh, so... I just think it's something that needs to be brought up and really uh, looked into hard and 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 transparent and be transparent about it and really go after it because our county needs it and the future of our county needs it and it would ultimately really benefit our business owners, small business owners, and our our students that are like I said, we go into this next school year with the same guidelines and we have to do some home based learning. Uh, it, it would have been really nice to have some good internet there. Uh, for them to be able to sit at home and learn. And like I said, that wouldn't have been an overnight deal, but at least that would have been something we could have done over the next couple of years instead of now it being multiple years. As far as you working towards uh, better access for the Internet in Harrelson County, is that something, would you have to be on the Board of Commissioners to uh, help make that happen? Is that something that you can do on your own if need be? As far as, you know, working You could always state? push on your own by, I mean, just uh, working alongside of the, the commissioners and your legislators and, uh, and lobbying for it by going up to the Capitol and, and working alongside of them. But I believe with my background of working with the governor and working uh, over at the state Capitol and having those contacts, I believe, by being on the board of commissioners, uh, it gives you a little bit more weight. You're coming to the table with something because you're able to do something. Um, so if I brought up those conversations, I believe that I would be able to have the contacts to get that ball moving and, and they would know that if they do it, then uh, then we're at, they got someone in place that can get it done, and I believe that I'd be that guy. John Daniel, our guest on this morning's Community Voice Program, candidate for District 3 Commissioner of uh, Harrelson County. Uh, your public safety background, how um, you know what, what, what could that mean for the sheriff's office? What could that mean for uh, for officers uh, if you were on the board of commissioners? Would that would that mean what? that you would work with them <laughs> better? You know, uh, better understanding of communicating with them, finding out their needs. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, I mean, 11 years of being a trooper, I've worked alongside of uh, local jurisdictions from police departments, uh, sheriff's departments, all the way up um, to the FBI. But I believe that working knowledge and uh, and us having an open sheriff's race going on right now, and I know each of the uh, guys running for that, we've got a lot of great individuals running. Um, but I believe that I would, I would be able to serve a purpose with working alongside of them with 11 years of being a trooper, I would understand uh, the needs and the wants there within the sheriff's department, but not only that, for our, uh, public safety in general, anywhere from our fire department, EMS, and 911, just making sure that they've got the tools uh, to work with. Uh, we've got a lot of equipment here in the county that's old and outdated. There's a lot of grant money out there that you can get to update that, and I'd be willing to work alongside of them to help them uh get those funds to try to make sure that when you call 911, call 911, no matter uh, who you are, where you live in this county, that someone, someone shows up and they show up and they're ready to do the job uh, and they've got the equipment to do it with. A lot of times um, we lack on the side of equipment and, um, and like I said, having older vehicles, that you run a risk of it breaking down and not getting there. And if that happens and now we've got to call for another unit and they've got to come out. So now you're, uh, response times extended. So I, I would really like to work alongside of them, and I think that I could uh, because I know all of them and have that working experience that we would have a good working relationship to get things done here in the county. Harrelson County, with one of the maybe the most recent <coughs> SPLOS that was approved, um, I know there was a big focus on, on getting the roads repaired, and they're doing it as the money comes in. They're not uh, doing bonds to get, uh, you know, to improve the roads or even, you know, add uh, roads. Uh, in certain places. Is, is there another way to uh, to improve the roads, or you think that's the right process? I believe what they're doing now is, is a great process. Um, we're seeing we're seeing roads get paved uh, at a higher rate than we have in the past, and 
I think I think that's really benefiting the county. Do we have more roads that need it? Absolutely, but I believe with the money they have right now, uh, they're getting it done. I know that the patch crew uh, is out working to try to keep what roadways aren't being serviced right now at least serviced and and passable with motor vehicles being on the roadway every day. They're trying to at least keep them up and. Uh, I believe there's some avenues we could we could go down, and maybe that would be something we could look at in the future of, with with getting paving equipment. But as they're doing it right now, I think it's working. And um, last I remember seeing, I think we've had over 60 miles of roadway paved uh, in the past year here in Harrison County. So it's it's really working, and I think folks are happy to see the roads being paved. And it's just a long process, and it's an expensive process. So it really takes looking into it to pave each road that comes uh, across the list to make sure that we've got the money to do it without uh, having to increase the taxes and, and put that burden on our taxpayers. Just do it with what you got and um, just build a list every year and try to get it done. As we uh, head out to our break here, I'll uh, ask you this one question before the break. We've obviously in the COVID-19 <laughs> pandemic and probably haven't been able to um, – uh, campaign and promote yourself as much as you would like have liked to over the last six, seven, eight months. Um, yeah, what has that process been like? What have you been able to do to get the word out about your campaign? It has been a difficult process. You're exactly right on that. Uh, long, long I intended to campaign. I'm sure all the other candidates feel the same. But uh, luckily, social media has grown over the past uh, decade, and uh, so I've, I've been able to utilize it. I try to stay on Facebook to get my message out there, but there's also a crowd that doesn't use Facebook, so I've tried to stay on the phone and uh, at least call the individuals and speak with them, and I've also uh, ran my ads to, to the local paper here to uh, at least put something right there in their mailbox that they can see and read, and I've also sent out two mailers, an open face mailer that uh, told a little bit about me and some ideas and plans that I have uh, for Housing County moving forward, and then I just recently followed up with another letter that I sent out to all the registered voters in District 3 uh, just to try to get something there in front of them because uh, you're trying to reach out to everyone and without the ability to go door to door and just staying on the telephone and using social media, it's hard to reach everyone, but at least if I can put something in their mailbox, it's right there in front of them and they had an opportunity to see who I am, what I stand for, and what I have planned for Harrison County moving forward. And we'll talk more about that after our first break. Uh, John Daniel, our guest on this morning's Community Voice program, running for County Commissioner District 3, is challenging the incumbent, Adam Buddy. Uh, when this program's finished, we're going to post it in its entirety to the Newstalk1330.com website, and we'll put it up on Facebook later on this morning as well. We'll get a picture of John uh, so you can recognize him, and we'll attach it to uh, Facebook, hopefully later on this morning, if not uh, early this afternoon. Time right now is 843. Community Voice, brought to you by Tenor Health System and Oak Mountain Academy here on News Talk 1330, FM 106.3. As we journey through this global pandemic together, Oak Mountain Academy is lifting everyone in prayer and holding the community in our hearts. We continue to pray for all of the families directly impacted and the first responders and medical personnel on the front lines. There are so many individuals working around the clock to keep us safe and healthy. I'm Patrick Uran, Headmaster, asking you to join all of us on the mountain in prayer and gratitude for everyone in our community. For more information about the Academy, visit us at oakmountain.us. For more than 70 years, you have turned to Tanner Health System for your health care needs. As our community moves forward, Tanner is here for you. Strong, safe, and close to home. Routine medical appointments, urgent elective surgeries, and imaging are back on the calendar at our hospitals and Tanner Medical Group practices. With the safety of our patients, staff, and community, always our top priority. Learn more at Tanner.org. Hashtag We Are Tanner Strong. That's Tanner.org. Hashtag We Are Tanner Strong. 844 Community Voice, brought to you by Tanner Health System, Oak Mountain Academy, News Talk 1330, FM 106.3. I'm Colin Worthington. Our guest this morning, John Daniel. He is running for District 3 Commissioner in Harrelson County. Get back to the conversation here with uh, with John. Um, what have, uh, you know, with the opportunities that you've had to reach out to uh, potential constituents, whether over Facebook or by the phone, 
Uh, what, what are their concerns? What are they telling you is the big issue for them? Well, actually, John, first of all, what, what, give me the boundaries for uh, District 3. Uh, district 3 boundaries, it's the biggest district in Harrison County. Um, it starts out around uh, the southern part of the county, around Waco. It consumes the most part of Waco and a portion of Bremen, uh, basically traveling 27 north uh, towards Polk County, and it uh, kind of makes a V-shape. It, it reaches all the way out into the Stedman and, and Felton area, uh, running north through the middle of the county and all of Buckhannon. Uh, fairly large district. Uh, last numbers I looked at, I, I believe there's around 4,100 uh, registered voters in District 3 for Harrelson County. So uh, very populated area and a big area to represent, uh, especially when it, it takes part of three of our major cities here in the county. Sure. Is that... Uh, um, that um has that number increased a lot over the last 10 years? I guess I mean, right now I'm feeling like, I mean, if it's more populated than the other ones, I mean, I'm picturing uh, that district, and it does seem like it would be more populated, but I assume um, after um, uh, after the census numbers are counted, you'd probably review shrinking that up a little bit and sharing that number if it's possible. Right, yeah, and I believe that, that'll fall into the uh, redistricting process uh, that's coming up here soon uh, after the census is completed. Um, it is a populated area, but it's it's such a big area that um, that everybody's still kind of spread out. There's just a few little sections throughout that part of the district, like downtown Buckhannon and Waco, uh, where you run into um, close residents. But as you venture further north, uh, the houses are few and far between, of course. But still a lot of people to represent, uh, even out into the further stretches of the county. So what are they telling you when you do get that chance to reach out to them? Um, what are their interests? What are the their most, concerns? For the most part, the uh, the common talk, of course, is our roadways. Everyone uh, wants a paved road. We still have uh, quite a few uh, dirt roads here in the county, so and a lot of them uh, would like to see them paved. And I know we're working towards that now. And it's like I said, it's not an overnight process, and it's not a cheap process. Um, the lack of internet is a has become a really big one. Um, like I said, with uh, schools being out, and a lot of the parents are home with their student or with their kids, uh, <laughs> who have, I guess kind of rolled over into being their student because they're trying to to teach them everything that was sent home from the school system. Uh, everyone's realized the lack of internet in the county and the need for it. Um, and for those that have been at home or trying to work from home due to the virus, with the lack of internet. Uh, it could have been beneficial to keep them home instead of having to travel to an office somewhere or somewhere where they could get Internet access. So Internet and the roadways are, are a big talk, and, of course, the taxes always are. Um, our taxes are, are pretty high in, in Harrelson. Um, they they have maintained over the past couple of years and, and went back a little bit, uh, but with the lack of industry here in in the county, anytime there's a state mandated tax and it's put on to uh, the people or the county, then we just kind of have to eat that tax. And without the industry to be able to kind of help alleviate that tax burden, um, it falls on the back of the taxpayers and our citizens and seniors. And uh, even though they go up, we have to try to find a way to try to find a way to pay it. And sometimes it's not that easy to do. And um, so that's something I'd really like to look at is. Uh, work with our economic development authority and try to get some industry in here that could help alleviate some of that tax burden to to get some money moving you can you can do it that way or increase your tax base which means more people moving into uh, the county and for the most part when you talk to people from Harrelson they they like how it is they like uh, that it's rural but they also uh, they also want the taxes to go down and understand that uh, that may have to come by some industry coming in but uh, that's something we could definitely look at to to help alleviate that tax burden that they're currently carrying right now. The, the commission approves a budget every year. You wouldn't get the chance to uh, review it this year, uh, but if you were elected, you get the chance to uh, discuss the budget, be part of the budget next year, and uh, talk about how much money is collected from residents. What, what, what's your process? What would you um, work through uh, when you're trying to determine whether or not to raise the millage rate or maintain the millage rate or even lower it? What would you have to look at and what uh, things would you talk through? Well, I, I, we'd always have to visit and see what our, our median income is for the county to, to know if it's something that we're able to do. And hopefully you never have to raise the millage rate. Uh, uh, but I know that's part of life. And as the cost of living goes up, uh, 
then that's something that you have to look at. But like I said, if we could if we could really go after some some businesses uh, and work with our economic development, that would help keep that that millage rate rolled back and uh, keep that burden down and alleviate some of that strain. So that's something we would we would look at. But uh, I mean, we just got to take care of our our taxpayers, and the majority of Harrelson County is seniors, uh, and they carry a lot of the tax burden. They they still pay uh, heavy into the school tax, which that falls on the school board. But uh, by working with the school board, along with the board of commissioners, having that positive working relationship, and I believe me coming from the uh, school system would help bridge that gap where we could work together. Then maybe by doing that we could also help lower the millage rate because they they carry a portion of it and so so does the board of commissioners so by working together you could help alleviate some of that burden uh just by simple communications with one another and seeing where uh, things can be done to help with that well harrelson county does have a number of significant employers um, and there's interest, you know, I hear about all the time about an interest in new business, checking that out. Um, the location seems to be prime, you know, you're an hour out of, uh, out of Atlanta, and, you know, in between Atlanta and Birmingham. What is it? What, what, um, why, why is Harrelson County not able to attract that one big business, those, those big businesses that will help with the, um, uh, tax base? Well, our, our infrastructure is not where it needs to be. I mean, like we've talked about in depth earlier, um, uh, the lack of, internet here in the county um, a huge majority of businesses and, and life is all conducted on the internet now so without a quality high-speed internet uh, the business is already going to uh, be hurt be in a position where they they're hurting and not able to communicate with their customer base um, but also sewage and water we got a we ran into a water issue here in Harrison County a few years ago during the drought and uh, where we had to buy uh, from another state to keep the water source in, and that's great that we have that working relationship with them uh, and we was able to stay out of a bind. But uh, it was visited many years ago to have a reservoir here in Harrelson County, and since then, uh, after it was turned down, no one's ever really followed back up with that to uh, to try to push that along and see if that's something we could do. But I believe uh, with that, it should have been an eye-opener. Even if we can't go with the original location, I believe that that needs to be looked into uh, in depth and um, and try to get that going again. Because without the water, without the uh, Internet, businesses aren't going to want to come here uh, in the sewage system. It all is going to play a role, and I believe that hurts us a little bit. Uh, but if we could start at least moving forward and, make ourselves appealing uh those businesses to join right up and and move in here and it's just going to take a little work now but in the long run it'll pay off but if we don't start the process now then we just extend the process out and it, another 10 and 20 years from now and uh and then look back and say well i wish we would have time right now is eight fifty-three. my guest this morning is john daniel he's a candidate for district three commissioner of harrelson county we're going to take our final break and give john a, a chance to, to give that final speech the question that uh, you know when he's approached on the street why should we vote for you john daniel Eight fifty-three. community voice brought to you by tanner health system news talk 1330 fm 106.3 for more than 70 years, you have turned to Tanner Health System for your health care needs. As our community moves forward, Tanner is here for you. Strong, safe, and close to home. Routine medical appointments, urgent elective surgeries, and imaging are back on the calendar at our hospitals and Tanner Medical Group practices. With the safety of our patients, staff, and community, always our top priority. Learn more at Tanner.org. Hashtag we are Tanner Strong. That's Tanner.org. Hashtag we are Tanner Strong. As we journey through this global pandemic together, Oak Mountain Academy is lifting everyone in prayer and holding the community in our hearts. We continue to pray for all of the families directly impacted and the first responders and medical personnel on the front lines. There are so many individuals working around the clock to keep us safe and healthy. I'm Patrick Uran, Headmaster, asking you to join all of us on the mountain in prayer and gratitude for everyone in our community. For more information about the Academy, visit us at oakmountain.us. 854 Community Voice brought to you by Tanner Health System, Oak Mountain Academy, News Talk 1330, FM 106.3. I'm Colin Worthington, wrapping up our program here with John Daniel, candidate for Harrelson County Commission. 
wants to represent uh, District 3. I'm going to try and get two more questions to you here in this five minutes. Uh, when is it okay to tell a property owner that uh, they could not do what they want with their land? For example, if somebody wanted to build a landfill in Harrelson County, how would you uh, would you tell them we don't want that here? How would you uh, you know what would you how would you how would you tell somebody they can't do what they want with their property if that's even your perspective? Could could you uh, you cut out for a second if they wanted to build what? At, just for example, just pulling something out of the thin air. If somebody wanted to build a landfill in Harrelson County and they owned the property or had access to that property. Could you tell them, uh, Would you on the board, would you uh, go against allowing the zoning change that would allow them to do that? If it would serve a benefit to the county, I mean, um, would that be considered a business? And also, uh, just with speaking of a landfill, I mean, there would be so many uh, rules and regulations that would stem down from the uh, EPD about that. I, I believe that that would have its hang-ups in and of itself, but uh, if you're... If you're a taxpayer here in this county and you own the property, you're paying taxes on it. Um, as long as you can go through the process uh, to get approved whatever you were wanting to do on that uh, piece of property, I mean, that's completely up to you. If they wanted to build a five-story house on that piece of property, uh, they could do that uh, or start a business. I, I believe that that kind of comes down from, from Governor Kemp. Sometimes you got to cut a little bit of the red tape. Uh, to keep people from being hindered. And I know there's a lot of people in this county that would do some things with their property that would be beneficial to our county. And uh, I believe that's something that uh, a case-by-case basis you just have to explore. But uh, anyway, we could cut back regulations to allow them the freedoms that they deserve on their own property, then I believe we should definitely go forward with that. 8.57 right now. I'm going to give you two minutes, John. This is, uh, I guess, what Steve Gradick likes to call the elevator speech. If somebody just bumps <laughs> into you. Uh, out and about and says, hey, John, I'm I'm really you know, back and forth between you and Mr. Buddy. Why should I uh, elect you? Well, first, thank you for having me on uh, this morning. I appreciate it. But uh, like I said to start out the show, I'm, I'm a lifelong resident here of Harrelson County. I've uh, got deep family roots here, um, and I plan to, to keep my roots here uh, for the rest of my life. But ultimately, uh, my wife and I, we have a son who's going to grow up. He's going to live here. His life's just beginning. Uh, so if I can start working and doing something now to better benefit Harrelson County, not only will my son benefit, but our future generations will. Uh, and I believe the ones that have set the path before us have laid that foundation, and they've kind of left it up to us to, to build the walls and put the roof on it, uh, so to speak. And, and that's what I want to do. I want to make Harrelson County self-sustainable uh, and be able to keep it in its rural status that it is where everybody knows everybody. Uh, but we're able to, to take care of the ones that took care of us, which is our seniors. Uh, so I want to work hard for them and hopefully alleviate some of the tax burdens that they have, not only on our seniors, but our citizens, uh, and give them a quality life that they don't have to travel off to get. They can uh, stay right here in Harrelson County and be uh, successful and, and, and raise their family here and know that their family is going to be able to be successful here. And I believe I bring that to the table uh, with great – state contacts, uh, a working knowledge of our county, uh, and knowing people from all walks of life within our county from my years of service here and life here. Uh, so I just want to continue my, my service by working on the Board of Commissioners as the District 3 Commissioner and give back the same way that the communities uh, gave to me and allowed me so many opportunities in my life. John Daniel, our guest on this morning's Community Voice Program, candidate for District 3 Commissioner of Harrelson County. John, good to talk to you. Good to talk to you as well, and thank you for having me on. Absolutely, and we appreciate our listeners this morning of the Community Voice Program here on News Talk 1330 FM 106.3. Again, this show in its entirety will be posted in uh, podcast version on our website, Newstalk1330.com. I'll get that up in just a few moments, so if you missed any, you can go back and visit. Also, we're going to post this to the News Talk 1330 WLBB Facebook page a little later on this morning or early afternoon, and perhaps John can revisit that show on Facebook. And if you have any questions that maybe we didn't touch on this morning, you can post those up there. And Hopefully John can uh, take a chance, uh, have the opportunity to, uh, to go back and review those. Time right now is 8.59. Stay tuned for national headlines, followed by your local news, some uh, local news from this morning that I'm sure to update later on today. So uh, stay tuned to News Talk 1330 FM 106.3. Time right now is 9 o'clock. Have a great Tuesday.